the story of a poor family from the hills of the Ozarks who moved to Beverly Hills after they became rich overnight. The Beverly Hillbillies rolled into American living rooms on September 26, 1962, and became the highest rated show on television within a matter of weeks. Aside from the remarkable characters and memorable plot lines, the show brought various vehicles to the spotlight, many of which became as iconic as the hillbillies themselves. Today, we're taking a look at the cars of the Beverly Hillbillies. Let's begin. The Beverly Hillbillies family ride was a 1921 Oldsmobile model 43A Roadster that the Clampets modified into a truck. It was powered by a 43 horsepower four-cylinder engine and was designed by renowned Hollywood custom car expert George Barris. The Hillbillies modified 1921 Oldsmobile Roadster appears in the intro and all throughout the series. The Clampets plan to take a trip back home for Christmas to visit Cousin Pearl. Afraid that the family is planning to leave Beverly Hills and withdraw their money from the bank, Mr. Drysdale and Miss Hathaway speed over to the Clampett residence in a 1962 Plymouth Sport Fury. They arrive just before the Clampets depart and learn that the family only means to take a short holiday trip. As the Clampets are parked outside the bank, a couple driving a 1957 Chrysler New Yorker pulls in front of them and backs into their truck. I told you not to drive with that hangover. The damage is minor and the parties think little of it. But when the couple discovers how much money the Clampets have, they fake injuries and take the Clampets to court and attempt to sue for damages. Shut up and act hurt. That old geezer's worth $35 million. What? In an attempt to change his Hollywood identity, Jethro arrives in a 1966 custom stiletto car, a futuristic-looking automobile that Jethro refers to as a twin spear. This here is a, a hand-built, wedge-designed, custom-made rear-engine, turbocharged twin spear. She puts out 600 horsepower at 8,000 RPM. After finding out that Jethro traded in the family's beloved truck for the space-age-looking automobile, Jed demands that he return it. <laughs> Jethro begrudgingly obliges, but then returns with an ocelot buggy, a design based off a bushwhacker dune buggy. Again, the trade-in doesn't go over well with Jed. Where is the truck? <laughs> I swapped it for this. <laughs> Swap it back. A third attempt at trading in the truck results in Jethro arriving in a hot rod version of the family's 1921 Oldsmobile Roadster. When Jed and Granny protest, Jethro finalizes the design with a few more modifications. <laughs> An upset Granny persuades Jethro's mechanic to finally put the family's truck back together. The mechanic's done it. I just persuaded him. Good. All it took was a little sweet talk and a club. After a heated debate, to prove who has the superior ride, Granny and Jethro set off to the races. While Granny boils water from the cement pond for washing, and Ellie Mae gets a feminine makeover by Miss Hathaway, a visiting oil man, John Brewster, arrives at the family's old cabin behind the wheel of a 1962 Chrysler New Yorker. Cousin Pearl wastes no time making eyes with the man as he gives her a ride to the nearest town, which turns out to be a longer trip than expected. Well, we've already driven 110 miles. <laughs> well, to mercy, I forgot to tell you the turn off. <laughs> Granny has everyone up at the crack of dawn to plow the front yard for her garden. But just before the plowing begins, Miss Hathaway arrives in her 1963 Dodge Polara 500, shocked to see the family preparing to tear up the yard. Miss Hathaway and the family come up with a plan to help change Granny's mind. They force Granny into the Dodge Polara 500 and take her on a ride through the countryside to observe the ways of the local farmers, hoping to change her mind about plowing up her yard but to no avail. In a last ditch effort, they drive Granny to the supermarket to show her how much easier it is to shop for food rather than growing it. 
When the Clampets meet a new neighbor, they mistakenly think she's the rich new neighbor's cleaning lady. Miss Hathaway and Mr. Drysdale arrive on scene in a 1965 Dodge Coronet 500. Not realizing the mistake Jed and Granny have made, Drysdale and Hathaway are encouraged that Jed has taken an interest in her and hope he'll consider marrying her. And Granny, of course, is always interested in getting Jed hitched. During a women's equal rights demonstration in front of the bank, Mr. Drysdale's bodyguard and karate expert destroys protester Helen Thompson's 1956 MGA Mark I by chopping it in half with his bare hands. Oh, he demolished it! Later, Miss Hathaway and Granny head to the bank in a 1971 Dodge Challenger to confront the karate expert and make things right, Granny style. Shorty arrives at the Clampett residence driving a 1915 Ford Model T. He's joined by Mr. Drysdale's secretary, dressed in a nursing uniform, who's there to deliver Jed's check from the bank for $48 million. While there, Shorty figures he'll invite Drysdale's secretary to go with him for a swim. Leif Crick from back home comes to Beverly Hills to visit Jed secretly plotting to get a piece of Jed's fortune. Leif schemes to marry off his daughter, Essie Bell, to Jethro. Leif and Essie Bell arrive at the Clampets in a 1931 Ford Model A, and Leif thinks he's soon to be rich. But after Jethro runs off with another girl, Leif and Granny attempt to arrange a shotgun wedding between Jethro and Essie Bell. But the wedding plans fall flat after Leif learns that Jed has no intention of separating from any of his money. The female employees at the bank rebel against Mr. Drysdale's unfair work practices. As he attempts to squash the protest, the girls acquire a 1971 Dodge Tradesman van, which they plan to use as transportation to get to and from their planned headquarters at the Clampett Mansion. The girls demonstrate their dedication to the cause by decorating the Dodge Tradesman van with drawings reflecting Mr. Drysdale's oppression. Finally, a fed-up granny takes matters into her own hands. After Jed and Mr. Drysdale commence to get Ellie and Sonny together on a blind date, Sonny arrives to the Clampett Mansion driving a 1955 Mercedes-Benz 190 SL. But their date goes awry when his sweet gift isn't quite what Ellie expected. Ha <laughs> you guessed it, it's me. <laughs> and she mistakenly thinks he's trying to take a bite out of her hand. Uh, hey, why did you throw him? That rascal was fixing to bite me. <laughs> Granny comes up with an idea to get the perfect man for Ellie Mae, her television idol, Western actor, Quirt Manley. Mr. Drysdale arranges for Quirt to visit the Clampett Mansion where he arrives behind the wheel of a 1964 Pontiac Bonneville, complete with Quirt Manley decals on the doors. An excited Jethro gets permission to drive Quirt's Bonneville around the block a few times. He arrives back to the mansion after gathering the attention of quite a few Quirt Manley fans. Jethro falls head over heels with a woman he's never met, a movie starlet. Kitty Devine. He's convinced they'll get married and makes an attempt to see her, even chasing her down in her 1959 Alfa Romeo Julieta Spider. But she curves his advances and sicks her dog on him. <laughs> it's not until she learns that his Uncle Jed owns the movie studio, then she changes her tune. In a banking mix-up, the Clampets receive an overdraft statement from the bank, intended for the deadbeat actor J.D. Jake Clampett. While Jake Clampett receives a letter from the bank stating that he's now worth $36 million. While Jed and his family figure on what to do, the deadbeat Clampett cruises around in his 1964 Chrysler 300 while going on a spending spree with Jed Clampett's money. Mrs. Drysdale recommends Ellie for a highbrow finishing school in hopes that humiliating her will drive the Clampets away. 
Mrs. Drysdale and Ellie's classmate, Cynthia, arrive in style in a 1933 Rolls-Royce Phantom II. Cynthia, I still do not approve of your attending school in such casual attire. None of the other girls are wearing slacks and sweatshirts. <laughs> oh, Mama, relax. However, Miss Hathaway spoils Mrs. Drysdale's plans after she convinces the girls at the school that Ellie is a fashion trendsetter. Jed and his dog, Duke, are both feeling down without a woman in their lives. Until a French woman, Ms. Denise, arrives in a 1963 Plymouth Valiant Signet, along with her female poodle, Colette, that she brought along to breed with Mrs. Drysdale's male poodle. But before the marriage between Ms. Denise and Mrs. Drysdale's poodles can commence, it appears that Colette takes a shine to Duke, and so does Ms. Denise with Jed. Jethro thinks he's in love with Chickadee Laverne, a stripper he met at the bank. She arrives at the Clampett Mansion behind the wheel of a 1964 Dodge Dart, looking for Jethro. After spending some time with the Clampets, it becomes clear that there's a misunderstanding about what's expected of her at the Clampett residence. Mr. Drysdale is expecting his new butler soon, but Drysdale is appalled when he sees the Clampets advertising rooms for rent in the neighborhood. The butler arrives behind the wheel of a 1961 MG Midget Mark I and mistakenly thinks the Clampets are the family he's assigned to. The Clampets, thinking he's there to rent a room, graciously welcome him home. Leif Crick returns to the Clampett Mansion, being driven by Miss Hathaway in her 1964 Dodge Polara. It seems that Crick is back with yet another scheme to get rich off the Clampets' wealth. Throughout the series, Mr. Drysdale, Miss Hathaway, and other characters drive a variety of Imperials, including a 1962 Imperial LeBaron Southampton, two 1963 Imperial LeBarons, a 1964 Imperial, two 1964 Imperial Crown Convertibles, and a 1971 Imperial LeBaron. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here.